Uh, welcome to our presentation called Early Literacy and Your Baby, a parenting workshop. I am Katie and my wonderful colleague, Elizabeth. Say hi, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Hey. Um, so we are here tonight to talk about all things babies reading. It's going to be so much fun. Um, so first, we're going to introduce ourselves. And then we're kind of going to get started. So we'll be sharing screen. We do have a PowerPoint tonight. So we'll be kind of bopping in and out. Um, so we have a wonderful assistant, Debbie, here, and she's going to start sharing our screen. Awesome. So I am the Early Literacy Services Manager and Elizabeth is the Family Engagement Librarian and we're just gonna talk a little bit about us. Hey everyone, so I'm Elizabeth and I am the Family Engagement Librarian and I specialize in presenting baby story times, preschool story times, large scale family experiences and non-traditional collections. And I'm really passionate about connecting families and babies to the library. And I am Katie, I'm the Early Literacy Services Manager and I do everything from age zero to six at Gail Borden Library. And I love working with babies and toddlers and preschoolers, teachers, um, caregivers, grandparents, um, and I get to do a lot of things in my job, including uh, managing the early learning center and story times and big events. Um, and I love picture books. So that is, that's me. Okay, so what are we going to talk about tonight? So we are going to discuss early literacy. We're going to provide you with a really basic definition, and we're going to talk about what it means and why it's important. And then we're going to explore the five early literacy practices, and then we're going to share different tips and tricks on how to implement these practices at home with your baby. Then we're going to share all the awesome resources that the library has to support you in exploring these skills at home with baby. So what is early literacy? This is something I had no idea before I went to school. It sounds so fancy for something that's not that difficult to understand. So it is everything that your child needs to know before he or she actually begins to read and write. So there's quite a lot of skills um, that a child needs before they actually learn to read and write. Um, things such as verbal and nonverbal communication, understanding language, the world around them. There's things like recognizing letters, recognizing numbers, colors, shapes, other concepts. Plus, in order to write and even turn the pages of a book, you need your finger muscles to develop. So practicing things like finger plays so the fingers actually can hold a pencil or a pen later. Um, it's important to note that some, some children learn these skills at a different time. Some learn um, more easily or more quickly than others and that is 100% okay. Um, just like children learn to walk and to talk at different times, kids pick up these principles um, differently. So at the library and a, lot of, and a lot of libraries around the country use something, a program called Every Child Ready to Read. And the graphic is right there on your screen. Um, it's wonderful to do more research about Every Child Ready to Read if you're interested. But if you don't, all you need to know is that there are five skills. And this is reading, singing, playing, talking, and writing. Um, and we're gonna give you some ideas tonight about how you can do simple activities with your baby, even sometimes you're with your baby before they're even born um, to encourage these skills. So they're in, they can be incorporated every day um, into your routines and they are not gonna require expensive materials. So don't think you need fancy toys or anything special. These things can be done with you and familiar objects and even on going on walks outside. Um, and we always talk about at the library that, you know, different children have different attention spans 
And so you can do these activities for short times throughout the day. You never want to create a negative experience um, for, with a book, for example. So if it's just not the time to read a book, that's fine. Put the book away. Wait till there's a better time because um, you don't want to create ne negative experiences. You don't want to push them and make it feel like it's a chore to read. It should be fun. All right, next slide. Okay, so why is this important? Um, well, the research supports um, reading as an essential skill. Um, children who are able to read before they are in fourth grade um, demonstrate better outcomes, both in school success and then in later life success. So reading is essential. Um, and reading begins even before birth. So you can just read to your baby while he or she is growing in your womb. And it provides a lot of comfort to your baby just to hear your voice. And that facilitates bonding. And we're going to talk <clears throat> more about that later. Um, and then reading also begins in the home. And parents and caregivers are a child's first and best teacher. Uh, learning really begins in the home and yeah. All right. So a word about your home language. So as you can see, there's all kinds of different languages here and we all speak different languages. Um, if English is not your first language, always speak the language that you know best um, when engaging your child with these practices because this allows you to explain things more thoroughly. Um, and it's really fascinating. Babies can learn multiple languages at once. In fact, early childhood is the best time to learn a second language. Um, and to, if, you're learn if a baby is learning two languages at once, um, they typically become native speakers of both languages. So it's, it's the perfect time um, to learn more than one language. Okay, so I'm going to discuss one of the five early literacy practices, and this one is writing. And basically, um, of the um, early literacy practices, like writing um, actually happens um, before reading, obviously. Um, there's a strong connection between reading and writing. And when children are given a chance to explore scribbling, um, drawing pictures and telling stories like they're actually learning reading skills. And uh, when children have a chance to do their own writing, they're able to feel connected to print in a different way than when they're just listening to a story. So being an active participant in writing helps keep children excited about reading stories. So allowing children to practice like making lines, Curve circles will later inspire them to write letters on purpose. And children sometimes will make marks or a scribble and look at it and then identify letters that they, that they see. And they'll say, look, I made a T. Um, so next slide. So how can I help my baby learn to write? So obviously providing a lot of opportunity to um, engage with materials like crayons, um, that's the obvious one. But before they're even able to um, hold a pen, they need to develop those muscles in their hand. And they do that by um, playing with Play-Doh, um, like rolling it. Um, that helps them to develop those muscles in their hands. Um, but then also using things like salad tongs to transfer like pom-poms from one bowl to another. Um, that would be like the first stage of developing those fine motor skills. And when the child is a little bit older, like when they're three, you can give them something like a tweezers, obviously supervised and have them then transfer like small rocks um, to a bowl. Um, so all of those activities are giving them the um, muscles in their hands so that they'll later be able to hold like a small pen. Um, so yeah, and then you can um, just hold some uh, tracing 
letters and have them um, just use their hands doing the different shapes of the letters and definitely exposing them to lots of material like markers, crayons, paper, just giving them a lot of opportunity to um, just scribble. Next slide. Plus it's, plus it's fun for us, right? Who does not want to play with like shaving cream and I don't know, tongs and pom-pom sounds fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna talk about singing. Uh, I love singing. I grew up in a very musical family. Um, and songs are a very natural way to, to learn about language. I often say that books are made of paragraphs and paragraphs are made of sentences. Sentences are made of words and words are made of syllables. And singing is a great way to break down words into syllables because like the sing songy nature of um, breaking down a word into two different modules, that's what a child is hearing when they're breaking apart a word through song. And it increases, it increases awareness of the sounds in your words. Um, it also increases a child's vocabulary, even the itsy bitsy spider. Think about the words in that song, up the water spout, um, about, and the rain. You're learning about all these different new vocabulary words um, whilst singing and building the muscles in your hands. So multiple things are going on just in a song. Also, uh, rhyme and rhythm and repetition all are really, really important for developing language and, and taking in the world around you. The more you do it, um, the more the child will understand the concepts, you know, the concepts of language and wor words and all of those help reading later. Um, rhythm itself is something that like right now you're hearing my voice go up and down. Um, that there's skills that you can use to practice. I love to clap um, along with my stories and songs or pat your hands, that getting the rhythm inside your body and inside your baby's body that will really help them to uh, read later on also. Um, and singing songs all around. Um, I'll talk a little bit in next on the next slide about what what to do and what songs to do. Um, but don't be afraid to stretch out the words and to be silly. Um, your child loves your voice. So if you think like, oh, I'm not a singer. I didn't grow up in a musical family. Don't worry about it. Um, your child has been listening to your voice ever since they were you know, inside your body <laughs> or even you know, whoever else is in your house, they've listened to uh, the voices of those around them and your child will recognize those voices. Um, and so do not think that you have to be a perfect singer. Uh, we have this video that will warm your heart. Um, it's of a child sing hearing her mother sing and let's have Debbie play it. Até diz que tem um anel de formatura É mentira da barata Ela tem a cascadura Ha 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 um, that makes me smile every single time I see it. Um, you see the, in the intensity of the child looking and recognizing his mother's facial expressions just in awe of uh, the way that she is singing, listening to the voice so close to her body. I mean, it's creating a bonding experience, which all of those are super important for attachment and um, you know, growing those neural connections. Um, creating a positive experience about the world. I mean, so much is going on just in something simple like that. Um, okay, so what do babies like to hear and sing? So much and anything, really. Um, every transition time in your life is an opportunity to sing. So if you are doing, if you're changing the diaper, um, and you don't even have to know a diaper song, it can be like, I am changing your diaper and I love you. 
I am changing your diaper and I love you. Like it doesn't have to be a perfect diaper changing song. It can just be anything that you make up. Um, same with meal and snack time on the in a car is great or in the grocery store, start pointing um, at objects and singing about them. Um, nursery rhymes are the classics, you know, uh, like Itsy Bitsy Spider is a great one, um, especially the ones that use the fingers. Children's musicians, uh, Gil Warden, we love our children's musicians. And I do have a list uh, at the end of this uh, PowerPoint to show you some of our favorites, just so you can um, take down their names. You can search them on, on YouTube. We also are getting a Spotify account at Gail Borden, and we would love to share um, playlists of our favorite musicians. So keep note of that, that's coming. Um, songs on the radio, songs that you like. Um, my parents love the Beatles, so I heard Blackbird and I Want to Hold Your Hand. I know when I was super young, and so sing your favorites. And then nonsense songs, love nonsense. Just, I mean, that was Dr. Seuss, right? It was just making up nonsense words, so making up gibberish. It's so fun. Um, one of the places that we like to go at the library is called J. Brary. So um, that is a blog, but they also have a YouTube channel and that has literally every finger play, song, rhyme, action song that you ever want to do. Um, and they're all acapella. They're all, um, they don't have music behind them. They're just singing. So it's ideas for you um, to use with your baby. All right. Okay, so the next early literacy practice that I'm going to talk about is talking. So what is talk? So I have an actual definition of it and talk is the act of emitting sounds with the intention of communicating a specific desire, need, or thought. And talking, telling stories, stretching conversations, these are all ways that kids can learn information, new vocabulary, and other early literacy skills. So basically, children learn about language just by listening to parents talk and joining in on the conversation. Um, so there's this really um, sweet video that we're going to play here. And this is just like a really great example of a parent that's encouraging their child to just explore sound. Um, yeah, so we'll play it and then we'll um, discuss a little bit after about what we see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he was um, communicating his ABCs. And what was really great about the video is that the parent was not correcting that child. They were just sort of like letting them be in the moment and say what they wanted to say. And um, he's really adorable. <laughs> so some background knowledge, like in order to know how to read the word tree or to spell it themselves, like kids actually need to know what a tree is. And they learn that from you talking and explaining things to them. So um, they need to know their environment and the world around them. And they come to know it basically through you and what you say. So the next slide, we'll discuss some tips So what should I talk to my children about? So you can do some really simple things like just like narrating um, your day. You can just tell um, your baby like basically everything that you did that day. Um, and then what you can get into the habit of doing even when your baby is just an infant is just asking them about their day. Um, that was something that I would do with my baby um, last year in the pandemic. Um, I had an infant and I just would pop him into a stroller and we would go out walking and I would just describe everything that I was seeing and going through like all my different senses. And though he, and I would ask him like, how does that, how does the wind feel on you? And even though he couldn't say anything, he would make different sounds um, on the different things that we would hear. So babies do, communicate with you. Um, so just getting into the habit of just like having conversation. 
So making good eye contact and then responding to the different sounds that your baby makes. And then you can just like point to the different things that are part of your daily life. Um, something like at the grocery store, just like pointing to the different things that you're gonna get on your grocery list. And then you can also use a mirror and let the baby look at himself or herself and ask questions like, who's that? And say her name and go through all the different parts of the body. And you can also just like expand on what your child is saying. And you can also, like Katie was saying in the previous slide about singing like the nonsense songs, you can just like um, make up a language too. And you can um, find things that rhyme and just make up nonsense too. Um, but similar to the writing practice where it's helping your child to develop those muscles. Um, there's also another activity that you can do that will help to strengthen the small muscles in their mouth, which is um, blowing bubbles. That actually helps prepare them to talk. So, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, moving on to reading. Um, so reading, evidence-based research says that reading is the most important way to help kids get ready to read. Um, as you see in this picture, the uh, baby is taking in the idea of a book. So even to, if I hold up a book, there's something, there's so many things to understand about this book and babies don't know right away. So talking about the book, this is the book cover. This is the back of the book. Let's put the book upside down. Um, understanding, it's not intuitive to understand like left to right orientation. Like that's not, that's not something that we know coming out of the womb. So um, understanding that the writing starts over here and we read this way, um, when you see your child, I, I've seen a lot of babies start to want to turn the pages and just flip through the pages as fast as they can. That's great because it means they're understanding that it's going forward. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and then there's an end of the book. And all of that is sequencing, um, really understanding the format of a story and the format of your day, not to mention science and coding and all of that stuff too. Um, uh, what, what Elizabeth was saying about background knowledge, that's so important in order to read a dog, the word D-O-G, it doesn't make any sense unless you know what that is, like a, a con concept in the outside world. So working on that background knowledge, if they see this book, this one with a, a kitty, they can see, oh, that is the thing that we're talking about. It's not just like a random object in the sky. Um, it also encourages imagination and creativity as um, basically a book is a piece of art, you know, illustrations, drawing, photographs. Um, it inspires your children to ask questions about the world and questions about the literature. Also, um, it increases listening skills for the child and bonding between you and the child. Um, you typically, like this in this photo, you're close to your child. Um, they can listen to your heartbeat as you're reading the book. Like all of those are great experiences um, to make reading a positive experience uh, in your child's life. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, reading and demonstrate some practices later in the presentation. Um, so I'm not going to talk about how to read a book quite yet. So, um, what do babies like to read? Well, a lot of things. They love board books. You don't have to just read board books though. Um, these are just some topics and suggestions that we have. Books with photos of other babies. Okay. Babies love looking at other babies. Um, and it's more than just looking at them, they're discerning their facial expressions, just like looking in the mirror. So the practice that Elizabeth said of looking in the mirror. 
um, looking at another baby and seeing their facial features, their smiles, um, that builds socialization. Um, so they love looking at photos of other babies. Also, just think about the places that you go. You go to the park, you go to the store. So any book that has those familiar places that makes them understand the world and makes them feel safe. Any concepts, any concept at all, up, down, left, right, shapes, colors, ABC, one, two, three, opposites. Um, all of those things are so important for understanding space and time and uh, the things around us in our world. Animals and animal songs, sounds, so fun. Um, it's that, that the encouraging the exploration of sound. I mean, who doesn't love to say moo and woof woof? Kids love hearing that, it's very sensory. And then the people in their lives. So mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, nanny, everybody. Um, reading about family and friends is great. And then some of my personal favorites are lift the flap books and touch and feel books. Both of those encourage sensory um, activity because the baby is actually participating in the book itself, either by lifting the flap, which encourages peekaboo and things like that. Um, and then the touch and feel, there's some great series that we have here at the library. Um, one of my favorite is, it's called That's Not My Blank. So like, that's not my unicorn that's not my reindeer. And then you go through and there's different textures. So there's like sandpaper type of feel. Um, and those, as you look through the book, you can use those words. Oh, wow, that's really rough. Or oh, wow, that's really smooth. That one's shiny. That one's really soft. Um, all those words are exposing the, your baby to new vocabulary. Okay, so the next early literacy practice, and I think this might be the last one that we're talking about, is play. And do not underestimate this early literacy skill because like this slide says with this quote by Mr. Rogers, playing is the work of childhood. So according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, play is the work of children and it's through play that children learn everything. This is how they discover their interests. This is how they are acquiring speech and also trying out um, the things that they know is in a play environment and situation and they learn new vocabulary and social emotional skills and cognitive skills. So play is how children understand the world and it's how they learn. Yes, no worksheets, right? Worksheets for three-year-olds, not gonna work. Um, so how do you play with your baby? Again, like, is this intuitive? Is it not intuitive? Not exactly. Um, it's been so long. Sometimes play can be drilled out of us, right? As adults, we're just like work, work, work. Um, so playing with your baby, here are some ideas. Acting out a story is a great idea. If you have puppets or props, great, but you don't have to use them. Or you can say you have a paper bag lying around and markers, you can get that out. And you can take a book and act out that story. You can act out a fairy tale if you know a fairy tale. Um, even if your child is a baby and is not responding in the way that like you typically think, oh, the preschool is gonna laugh and, and get involved, they're still soaking up everything. Um, playing with puzzles or toys. We have so many toys at the library. Um, puzzles are great for, again, strengthening those muscles and toys. As you can see in this picture, blocks are a great way to understand and think of what you can do with blocks. You can sort them, you can stack them, um, so many different things. Musical instruments are also great. Uh, we do have some instruments that you can check out at the library, but you can also just go around your house and use pots and pans and, I mean, think about other things like, um, even a, be careful, but like a pill bottle has that shake feature, so only under supervision, of course, but anything like that that makes noise, a fan, you can turn on the fan and listen to that. Um, 
dramatic plays. It's a very specific type of play. Um, and this can be like parallel play with another child far away. It can be directly with someone. It can be a solitary. Um, some ideas for setting up dramatic play are things like going to the doctor, a vet's office, a fire station or a castle or a restaurant. Um, all of those are building those skills that are real. They're imagining real life situations and using all of the skills we've already talked about. So we've talked about reading. What if you're at a restaurant and you're gonna write down the order of, you know, be a server, writing, um, you know, talking. You could pretend to be a dragon and a princess. And um, so you're using, in play, you're using the other four early literacy skills. Dance parties are so fun. Turn on whatever you music you love. Jump, bounce, twirl, all of those words and things are fun. It's fun to twirl, but it's also a word, a twirl. That's um, up, down, side to side. Uh, like I mentioned stacking and counting and sorting. Um, sorting is one of my favorite things. Uh, just get out some fruit loops and sort them by color. That's super fun. Or take out the fruits in your fridge or even just go through your fridge and say, oh, wow, I love grapes. What shape are they? Wow, what color are they? Um, go around and open your drawers. I, I, well, when I do that, mine are a mess, but you could, you could talk about all the colors and the shapes inside, um, just regular things in your house. Or scavenger hunts are fun too. Let's go find all of the blue things. Let's go find all of the circle things. Okay, so how can the library help you? Well, we are here to help you. Uh, we provide all kinds of programming from story times. We have a baby story time, toddler story times, preschool story times. We offer different family programs that really invite the whole family to come together. And I would say at Gale Board and the family programs are really have a strong emphasis on play and fun. Uh, we also circulate um, books, of course, but we have different kinds of kits that Katie will discuss um, a little bit later. We have circulating puzzles, and then we have this program called 1000 Books Before Kindergarten. This is an early literacy initiative aimed at reading 1000 books to your child before he or she enters kindergarten. So we have different incentives along the way. They go at 100 increments. So you just sign up and we start you off. Um, and then you just come to the library for your prize. And then we have a huge graduation party and it's something that's just really awesome. And then we offer a welcome baby program. And this is aimed at welcoming the baby to the library by providing baby with a library card and resources that explain all the benefits of that library card and just yeah um, then we have summer reading program that's starting um, and then our online resources and I don't know if Katie wanted to expand a little bit more on any of the bullet yeah, points. We'll go into more depth I think as the slides go by. Sounds on good. all of these things. So yeah, our story times this summer are all virtual, except for we do have two preschool dance parties that will be outside on our outdoor stage behind the library. Um, depending on, of course, weather, if weather likes to cooperate and if there are any guidelines regarding the pandemic for our state. But we are very excited to offer one is in June and one is in July. Um, and they are on Tuesday mornings at 11. So you can look in our calendar for those two dance parties. Then we have um, Tiny Tales, which is kind of for babies and toddlers. That's Wednesday mornings. Preschool Puppet Show, which is going to be so much fun. We're going to have a lion. No, what is it? It's a sloth and a llama are going to go on adventures. Who doesn't like sloths and llamas? Um, a couple more story times, journey into story time, Spanish family story time, and then we will have some specially themed. We have a silly story time, a farm story time. 
community helper story time. So check those out. Okay, and family programs. So I'm the family engagement librarian. So this is my specialty. Uh, we've got some really fun family programs going on throughout the summer. One that I'll be doing with Miss Katie is Parent Cafe. This is going to be on Friday starting on um, June 18th and 10 a.m. And Parent Cafe, we basically explored different topics that would be relevant to new parents. And then also on Fridays, we will be offering virtual Family Fridays. And like I said, um, all of these Family Friday parties have a huge emphasis on play and fun. And we're gonna be doing some art exploration programs this summer, some movie release parties to look out for and more, yeah. Okay, so we have some super special kits and one of them is called Bright Beginnings Kits. Um, I'm gonna show a physical kit. I do have one with me here, but I'm gonna share it with you at the end. Um, we also have early literacy kits and resiliency kits. We're not gonna have time to talk about those right now, but these are specially featured for you and your baby. What they are is a themed kit. So you, see, you can see in the picture, there's one about singing, and farms. And then there's one about reading at bedtime. Uh, these contain board books, a parenting book for you that kind of pairs with that subject, music, whether it's a playlist or a CD, and then a whole bunch of different types of um, tactile things. So whether that's a puzzle or a toy, a puppet, musical instrument like a tambourine, there will be something uh, for your baby to tactilely do. And then there will also, I'm sorry, our the li library will be closing in 20 minutes. Our library is library closing right now. Will be closing in 10 minutes. I'm just going to wait for the announcement to go by. You can't predict it, right? A live presentation. Okay. Um, and then what's great about these is they have suggestions for you on how to use these materials. So you don't have to just throw the toys down and have them play. We give you suggestions about questions to ask your baby and how to use those toys. So this slide just explores a little bit more um, all the different kinds of objects that we have for circulation. Um, we have toys and sorting toys, building toys, every kind of toy, musical instruments, literacy games, all those different kits that Katie just talked about, um, puzzles. Here's a picture of some stacking toys, and I think that's lacing boards. Um, so in case you didn't uh, know that we had all of these different resources, we do, and they're waiting for you to be checked out and used, and I believe they recently became available for checkout in post. Yes, they are all available now. Um, the only thing that isn't available is puppets at the time. Cool. Okay, so Elizabeth talked a little bit about a thousand books before kindergarten. Um, what's great about this program is you can do it both digitally online or you can do it with paper. So you can come in, you can also download a log on our website, but you can also come in and get a sheet and your child can color in the, uh, the books as you read them. Or you can do it on Beanstack, which if you're familiar with our summer reading program, um, Beanstack is very easy to mark the books off as you read. Um, and it's self-paced, um, so you don't have to do it by specific time just before your child uh, goes to kindergarten. So we always have a big party. This year it will be virtual, but we're gonna have a unicorn at the party, virtually a real unicorn. Um, so it's always a big celebration. We have um, our code, our not our coding, our um, 3D printer print out specialized medals for each child who graduates. So it's something special from Gail Borden a backpack that says, I am ready for kindergarten. I finished a thousand books and then a prize for every hundred books. So, and 
it's great to note that if you read one book per night, you'll reach 1,000 books before three years have passed. So just one book every night. Think about that. Like, it sounds like a lot of books, but um, I mean, you're building your child's brain. You're building your child's library of information. So it's a great program. Many libraries do it throughout the country. Um, and I think Gail Borden does it wonderfully. Okay, um, I think I'll talk about this one too. So, and Elizabeth, jump in whenever you want. Um, so we do have technology. I will say that the American Academy of Pediatrics says that baby, you know, baby babies up to uh, the age of two, it's not rec recommended that you have screen time, except for things like FaceTime, Zoom with grandparents where, you know, it's actual interaction or story times, things like that. Um, so these are more for when your child gets to be a preschooler, age three, four, five, six. I really like these different technology um, things that we have at the library, and I'll tell you why. So Wonder Books are from the, on the top right corner with the kids with the headphones. Those are books, actual physical picture books that you uh, press a button and it reads out loud to you. Um, they're available in English and Spanish, and the the, the books in Spanish are read by native Spanish speakers and they're beautifully produced um, with wonderful, it's like listening to an audiobook but with, with pictures. There's a wide variety of titles. They continue to get more and we always purchase more. Um, so please check those out. There's Playway Views and Playway Launch Pads. And as you can see, the top uh, black one is a view. And these are themed and they, contain stories. So similar to a wonder book, but not let's use using a screen. A wonder book is using pages. Um, and it's a book that reads to you. A launch pad is like an iPad with apps, but the apps are all early literacy and all early learning. And guess what? They can't go to the internet. There is no internet browser at all. All it is, is these uh, like learning games. So I really appreciate that because it's like a limited, they can't just go and explore Amazon or anything like that. It's self-contained in these in this system. Um, and these things all circulate for 28 days. So you can have, you can have basically an awesome iPad for a month. We are getting something new called Tony boxes. And as you can see on the right hand, that is like it's a three-dimensional little box. And what it is, is as you see, there's like a little thing on top, a little person. You could take that off and put another one on and it reads you different stories. So say you put the fox, the one that's a fox on it, it's gonna read you different stories than if you put the little girl here with the ears. Um, so it's basically audiobooks that read to you and each little Tony contains books. So it's super cool. There's things like Peter Rabbit, there's Disney. Um, so we don't, we haven't gotten them quite yet, but they will be launching hopefully this summer um, in kits just called Tony Boxes. So please check those out. Okay, so this slide points out some amazing online resources that we have. We have something called Tumble Books. And uh, at the end of this slide, uh, we'll actually take you to um, the page on our website that has all of these. So you can actually see live what it looks like. But basically Tumble Books is a curated database of children's eBooks. And there's a huge catalog there and it basically reads it out loud. Um, then we have something called Tumble Math. This is something for an older child. It's an offshoot of Tumble Books and it has math picture books. Hoopla is an app that allows you to stream movies and TV and audiobooks and music. And it can actually um, operate on different platforms like your TV or computer, phone or tablet. I like to think of Hoopla is like a sort of like Netflix, but for libraries. 
Cloud Library is similar. It's an ebook collection and collection of um, audiobooks. Press Reader, this is um, magazines. Um, you can actually read digital magazines and newspapers, and you can actually read them from different countries and in different languages. So L-O-T-E, LOTE Online, this is actually a new database that the library just subscribed to. And this is a really cool resource that we're going to also share with you in just a couple of seconds here. Uh, this is, um, you can have story times in different languages. So it's really cool. So now we're gonna go and show you the page. So this is the 24 seven e-library. This is where you're gonna access all of these amazing resources that I just talked about. So the first one that I wanted to share is the LOT, um, L-O-T-E stands for languages other than English. So you can see here all the different languages there. And, um, Miss Debbie, you can select anyone you want. Okay, Italian. So my son, Luigi, um, he is bilingual in Italian and English. So this one spoke to me. So here's all the different books that you can have read to you. And you have an option of first hearing it in that language. And then you can also hear it in English. So. Il sole e il vento. Era una bellissima giornata di primavera e il sole sorrideva, ma tutti tremavano perché un freddo vento ululava attraverso il cielo. Cool. So you can see that the text is up on the top so you can um, read it along with your child. Okay, so then if we go back, we can also take a peek at Tumble Books. Um, it's similar to that, um, but I think that... Um, it's just English, but I think they might have books in Spanish. Katie, do you? Your attention, please. No. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and find out. Okay, so this is what this platform looks like. So those are the new books um, right there and you can select any of them and have the reading experience. This is cool because it also has like quizzes along with it. Nina karate chop. When Nina was born, the doctor gently thumped her bottom to make sure she was breathing. Nina karate chopped her right back. Boom. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, um, yeah, so be sure to check those out. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, there's so many. You know, okay. there's other Spanish ones on there on Tumble Books, do you know? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I can look into it. I will. Cool. Okay, uh, we talked a little bit about Welcome Baby. Uh, the the in-person part of this is on hold right now, but what you do is either if you have your baby at Advocate Sherman, you can apply um, right there with your papers to get a library card for your baby, or you can just come into the library, any library location, and get a baby's first library card and start checking out all of these things. Then after the pandemic, uh, you will be invited to a baby's first library visit. Well, you'll get a little story time, a bag full of awesome stuff, a baby blanket, tons of early literacy materials, and a tour. So you'll see a tour of our early learning center. Okay, so at this point, Debbie, if you wanna stop sharing the screen, um, I am just going to show you first, I'm going to show you a great beginning kit, and then I'm just going to do a demonstration about um, reading to your baby. Okay, so right here, I have a bright beginnings kit. It's called Talking, and I love you. So this one is going to be themed. It's going to have these board books that are themed, hugs and kisses, 
baby talk. Remember how we talked about how uh, babies love to see baby faces? Wonderful. Um, it has a CD with suggestions for songs to play. It has instruments, baby rattles, shakers, toys, um, ooh, even the little emoji one. Um, and then it has a parenting book for you to read about. Um, this one I think is about child's language skills from birth to four. So there'll always be like a tie-in for you too, um, which I really like. And then it has a list of suggested ways to use these activities. So here we go. It has a baby rhyme with it um, and how to bounce your child on your knee and all kinds of things like that. So they're wonderful. I think there's 10 of them and we're trying to develop even more. Um, so again, those are bright beginnings kits. The next thing I thought I would just do um, a small demonstration about, sometimes it helps me to see things. I'm very visual. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about how I would read a book to a baby and what you can do with a book. So here's a book. It's called the Babies and Kitties book. And even before I open it, we can explore it. We can look at the kitty and say, oh my gosh, there's a cat. What does the cat say? Meow, meow. Oh, wow, and there's a child. What is she drinking? She's drinking milk. And look at the kitty's drinking milk through a straw. What color is the milk? Um, things like that. And then, you know, you open the book, and you don't even have to read the words. That's a misconception. You can if you want, but you can also just point out things in um, the pictures. So let's go along. Oh, babies and kitties peek and hide. And then you could even play peekaboo right there. So you can really interact with the book and have a dialogue with your child. Babies and kitties jump. Can we jump? And then you could bounce your baby on your lap and talk about jumping and high and low and fast and slow. They make silly faces. And then you could make a silly face with your baby. Um, so as you can see, I'm like right now, I'm not even reading the words. Um, and I, I just, it's called it's something called dialogic reading. And I think like before I even went to school or knew, I, I always thought I would have to read every single thing on the page or I should get through it even if the child isn't liking it and um that's not true you can you can stop in the middle of a book and come back at any time you can go through and talk your way through it and not have anything to do with the words itself you can also go and point to the words in the bottom um but you can make it a, a really fun um interactive experience with your baby so that's my little demonstration. Um, Debbie, can you share the screen again? Awesome. Okay, so these are just some of our favorite children's musicians. Uh, I'm gonna point out Casper Baby Pants He's awesome, I mean the name itself, but he has a lots of uh, great baby songs. My favorite is Run Baby Run, so fun. Um, and I really love Mr. John and Friends. We had him today um, and we've had a couple concerts with him. And we will have an upcoming Spotify list. So check out our, we're gonna put our preschool dance parties and our story time music on that. All right, Miss Debbie, have we had any questions at all? We have not had any questions, but I did want to let everybody know that Tumble Books does have um, Spanish books. Oh, thank and you. They also have French books. Thank you for that. Yeah, there's a tab called Language Learning, and they can find them there. That's thank wonderful. You. I thought um, thanks. Yeah, thank you. We, that's all right. You can always reach out to us with questions. Debbie, is there a slide with our contact information? I believe. Yes, there is one minute. 
So you can go ahead and take a screenshot of it, take your camera out, um, anything. And, and you can also just come to the library and ask for Katie or Elizabeth, and we'd be happy to take more questions. And you can email us. And if you're looking for specific baby resources, we would love to help you. Other than right. that, thank you so much for coming. Feel free to watch and rewatch and share with your friends because this video will be up on Facebook for anyone to watch later. Thank you. Thank you. I have a good night. Bye. Bye.